Hi, it's Gabe from All Star Telescope. Today I want to talk about my favorite budget conscious recommendation for people who come in and want to buy their first scope, the tabletop daub. Tabletop daubs are, as you might guess from the name, Dobsonian style telescopes that can be used on a tabletop. Uh, this has a couple of advantages. It means it's great for kids, uh, so you don't have to lift them up to the eyepiece. It's nice for groups too. Uh, you can put it on the middle of a table and everybody can look through. This does mean you can be reliant on having access to a picnic table or your car's trunk to set it on, but some of these also have the ability to use a tripod too, and we'll show you which ones later. Now the reason why I tend to recommend these as most people's first scope is because they've got an excellent price to performance ratio. By that I mean for the amount you pay, you get a lot of physical aperture. And the amount of aperture your scope has tells you how much you can see. And for that amount of aperture, you get my second point. It's actually quite portable considering how much aperture you get. Now for a six inch scope, is really compact, and when it comes time to use it, it unfolds. So being a Dobsonian, uh, it uses a Newtonian style telescope, which uses mirrors instead of lenses. That's a much more cost-effective way of gathering a lot of light. This means that you actually look in from the top, the front of the telescope, and your view reflects off of the secondary mirror, off of the primary mirror, and then back out. But they're not just any old mirrors. <laughs> oh no. Compared to any other telescope in this price range, this will give you the sharpest, clearest views because it uses parabolic mirrors, not cheap old spherical mirrors. Now within the Heritage line, there are actually two different sizes of scope. There's a 130 millimeter and a 150 millimeter version uh, that both use the same base between you and me. Price difference between them is so minute that considering the 150 millimeter one gives you a full 33% more light collecting area, I think I would go with the 150 millimeter every time. Now if you're just after the best bang for buck, then I would go with the Heritage any day of the week. Because it's got no motors, it's fully manual. What you see is what you get. Fully manual means you gotta push it around yourself and you gotta learn the night sky yourself, which can be rewarding in and of itself, but it is a task and it's something to consider. But if you really value convenience like I do, then you'll probably want a scope that has go-to capability like the Virtuoso. At its core, the Virtuoso scopes are really similar to their heritage brethren, but they've got motors in their altitude and azimuth directions, which means that you can connect it to your phone or hand controller and do a star alignment. And then when it's aligned, you can tell it to go wherever you want in the night sky. And when you find something, it'll also track it as it moves across the sky for you. It does have a spot for batteries or you can power it externally too. But if you run out of batteries or you don't feel like aligning it, uh, you can always use it fully manually too, just like the Heritage. Another thing that I really like about the Virtuoso scopes is you can remove the scope from it it uses the same standard dovetail that most of these mounts use. And now you've got a fully capable go-to Alt-As mount that you can mount your binoculars, your camera, a smaller scope, maybe a bigger scope, uh, and it'll retain the same go-to functionality that the original scope did. Now, I mentioned earlier that not all tabletop daubs need to be used on a tabletop, and the Virtuosos are special and then they do have a standard 3 8 tripod thread on the bottom. And so if you combine it with something like our Star Adventure or tripod, uh, you can use it wherever, you don't need a table. So other than the tripod, what else might you want to pick up with these scopes? Well, I like to recommend a nice sharp little high magnification eyepiece for really nice planetary and lunar views. I think about six millimeters is the most you'll want to magnify with these scopes. So a little Celestron plus little eyepiece I think is ideal. And for learning your way around the night sky, I always recommend the venerable 110 things to see. This will give you a nice tour guide of different deep sky objects to see depending on the season. If you just want to focus on the moon, or this is a gift for a first time stargazer, we've got 50 things to see on the moon. 
Turns out there's a lot to see up there. And so you don't get lost, a physical map to the night sky, a plastic planisphere. Doesn't need batteries, doesn't need internet, and is a great tool for learning the night sky. And finally, it's worth mentioning this little piece that's been on my desk the whole time, the first scope by Celestron. It's just a tiny little guy. It's a great gift for kids. Um, and at under 100 bucks, it's probably the least expensive, decent scope that you can get. However, due to its size, it's probably only good for the moon and maybe some of the brightest star clusters and constellations. Um, other than that, it's also a nice desk piece. Well, that does it for my favorite category of budget scope, the tabletop Dobsonian. Because of its excellent value and its really portable nature, I almost always recommend it as people's first scope. The Virtuoso scopes are the least expensive go-to capable scopes that you can find, and I'm glad that they come with a nice set of optics too. If you do have or are considering one of these scopes, we do have additional videos on things for maintenance and use, like how to collimate them, how to do a star alignment, how to use the SynScan app. And with that, I think that does it. Check out our website if you want to learn more about these scopes or any of the other scopes we carry. Thanks for coming by. We'll see you on the next one.